action. What's up guys? In today's video, we go deep sea fishing out of the Lake Worth Inlet and we got into some beautiful mahi-mahi. And we are gonna cat cook up these bad boys for a mahi-mahi or dolphin cast clean cook. What's up everyone, Dark Sizzle here, put him behind the camera. Today we are in the sword grounds. We are going sword fishing, deep sea fishing with Team Control Chaos today. We got Captain James, we got Scott, we got Kim with us, and of course put him behind the camera. So we are getting set up. We're gonna drop lines for our first drift. Space them out about 10, 15 feet apart from each other. Okay. We are all set up and officially fishing. We are running two LP 1200s. Our buoy rod is basically fishing about 100 feet off the bottom and then the rod net right next to Captain James is fishing directly on the bottom. So now it's a waiting game. We have to watch the rod tips and see if we get a bite. No, I see him coming up to the boat. Actually, they want it moving. Yeah, like three. Like three. Yep, they're right off the thing. Eat it, eat it. I'm letting, yeah. Woo, woo. Hooked up. All right, so we have decided to stop sword fishing and look for some mahi today. And I just hooked a fish. I gotta follow my fish. Ah. There we go. Oh yeah, nice. There's a nice one right there. That's a nice one. Woo! Just did a jump. Bunch of dolphin. All right, I'm gonna keep them in the water here while they get a bait out real quick. That's what you should do with mahi. We got a big school of them right here in the water. And it looks like there's a couple nicer ones here. So we're gonna get baits pitched back out and I'm gonna pitch this guy in the boat. But I'm keeping them close. This is a nice fish. Boat. Come on, come on. Yeah. Woo! Nice. Job, Look at that on the lure. Pretty cool. We're filling up the boat quick. I gotta get a line right back out and get me tied here. Okay. Nice. Bunch back here. Right back here, a bunch. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Hooked up. Straight back. Ooh, it's a little one. She's over. Over. There you go. Let's get this fish off. Get back out there. Yeah. Thank you. Will that keep? Come be close. Don't be close. Nice. We're loading up on Mahi right now, having a blast. Not gonna keep. Alright, all right, that's the first non-keeper. I think we have like five or six fish in the boat, which is not bad at all. And nice to load up on some mahi, you know, in the in the uh, month of September after sword fishing and not having a ton of luck with that, but you know what? That's fishing. But at the same time, we just came across a pot of fish and having a blast. Come on, dolphin, come to the boat. All right, so we just had the dolphin kind of leave our area within the last 10 minutes after catching a bunch of fish. And we are decided we're gonna troll around this piece of banana tree that's floating out here in the middle of nowhere. And as soon as I was, as soon as they're getting ready to do that and cleaning up the blood on the boat, I was just letting my line kind of drift back and I hooked the fish. So let's see if we can bring the school to the boat again and see if we can catch some more. All right, fish in the boat. Nope. That'd be to the fork, 20. Not a keeper, going home. Bye, buddy. One of the fastest growing fish in the sea, and they have a lifespan of about two to three years. So, you know, there's plentiful. That's a really awesome fish that people love around the world, and 
You know, we haven't even caught anywhere close to a limit. So we're gonna try to troll and see if we can bring up some more big ones. All right, guys, we are back at the house, and you're probably going, what the heck are you doing right now to this fish? Because I'm kind of outlining the first side right here. And what I've been doing, well, also, I want to thank Captain James and Kim for giving us a couple of the mahi so we could clean them at the house and cook them up. And he kept some of the bigger ones to make swordfish baits. And I am going to use the belly of this guy to make mahi belly strips. And they're supposed to be apparently tougher than bonita. And I have been making them more often now and just practicing. So what I've been doing is making that cut there. And I'm going to save this portion of the belly to make a couple strips of that, strips out of it. So don't freak out. I'm not wasting a ton of meat either. All right, so now that I made that cut, I'm gonna basically fillet off this side here and leave that portion on the fish so I can make a strip. All right, so now I'm just gonna take the seven inch blade, make the cut right behind the peck fin, angle it up towards the head, because there's always all that head meat. You can go right up to the nose. This is a female, so she doesn't have as much head meat as a male would, but there's still a ton of meat up there. So you wanna make sure you use that. And then I go down like this, Brian told me this is the wrong way, I don't know, but this is what works for me. Go straight down, just like so. I like to go to the tail. If you watched our recent video, Brian ended up flying a fish for the first time ever on camera, so go check that out if you're interested <laughs> in our mutton video, mutton snapper. All right, so now, just going over that backbone, or our spine bone. Staying right on those bones. Right by the head, just gotta break a couple pin bones. And then leave those rib cage bones intact. And Captain James was telling me too that these mahi, when they're born, they're actually born like pregnant. And they actually have like egg sacs or uh, row sacs inside them already. It's pretty wild because this fish only has really a lifespan of like two to three years is what he was telling me. They're fastest growing fish in the sea, but beautiful piece of slab of meat right there. And you can see I left that portion on so I can make my little strip out of that. And then I don't like to rip the skin because it leaves a really fine membrane and like a little, um, like a coating on the edge of the meat that I just don't like. It's really gross looking and it doesn't taste that good. And I can kind of give you an example here. I'm gonna to try to. So I'm gonna go halfway down this fish flip it over and I'm going to try to show you what I'm talking about here. See if I can do it this side. There we go. This is how everybody would do it. Or you take your knife and you like roll up the skin in the knife and you can just rip it back. But I don't want to do it on the whole fish. I just want to give you an example. There we go. All right, so you can kind of see it right there. You see that stuff and like that, those fine membranes and fibers on the fish's uh, meat? I just don't like the taste of that. If I go down a little further, you can even see more right there. But it's just its just not appe uh, appealing to me. And you know, it's my fish, so I can do whatever the heck I want with it. And I just prefer skinning it all the time. So I'm gonna finish skinning it right here. No big deal. And Brian's gonna make some healthy, healthy fish meal in the house. So I'm excited and I've got a bunch of pin bones right here. Just gonna knock those out just like so. But guys, don't forget about my coupon code on these knives, Darshizzle15, 15% off, plus free shipping. All that information will be down below. Also, don't forget about my awesome fish hook and anchor bracelets and the beautiful necklaces and pendants that I make on the website. Go ahead and check it out if you want something handmade by me. Now, flip the fish over and just get that little piece of bloodline out. Not a big deal. All mahi have a bloodline, even if you bleed them. And then we can clean up a little bit of what's left there in the house, no big deal. Just make a cut right down the middle. Two manageable pieces, good to go. We're gonna meet you guys in the house, finish up this fish, meet you guys in the house, and have an awesome meal in the kitchen with Cooking with Pudding. All right guys, another great job by Dar Sizzle filleting that mahi. Welcome to another edition guys of Cooking with Pudding, diet edition, and we almost had to call the fire department. I apologize, but the place got really smoky, and we're using a lot of pepper today, and it's like a peppery smoke, and it's really <laughs> killing Darcy and I. It's all in my eyes, and in my throat, and I sneeze like 10 times. But the gist of it is, again, we're cooking nice and dietetic and nice and healthy, and every time we do a mahi video, everybody goes, black and mahi, black and mahi, and we've never done it before. 
So today I decided to do it because it's just a, a, a rub, right? So it's uh, just spices, so it's not fattening. And so what I did, I got some B-roll here for you. I got all these spices and you combine them. I'll put the, you know, we'll put the menu, the menu, not the menu, but the recipe down below. And you combine the spices and you melt up a bunch of butter and you actually coat the fish with butter. You put on the rub and then you throw it in a very hot pan. And man, your guy's pan you gave me was very hot and it started creating a lot of smoke, but we cooked them one and a half uh, minutes on each side and they came out. I mean, I, of course I've tasted some, it's a little too spicy for Darcy, but the rub is delicious. I mean, it's really blackened. And I mean, here's the other one. And with our diet, we're also doing steamed carrots with that. And so I think it's gonna be delicious. We're gonna see how Darcy likes it. Because again, it's a blackened, so it's gonna be a little spicy. And I wanted to show you something from yesterday, or the last video, or uh, not the last video, it was just five minutes ago for you guys. But Darcy was flinging those mahi and made some strips. And so they come out like this, look at this. She puts them in a tray and some salt and puts them in the refrigerator. And we have a video on this and I'll, I'll put it right up here. But look, these nice mahi belly she made. So that came out really nice as well. All right, Darcy Sizzle, let's get, it, get to the table for the taste test. All right, Darcy Sizzle. Now I know the real what, reason why we do not blacken things here. <laughs> Our little microwave vent thing doesn't work. It's not connected to anything. This whole house filled with smoke, like every room, the whole house. And we just sit, stood here coughing for 10 minutes. It's crazy. It wasn't that bad. Pretty bad. <laughs> so what do you think about the blackened sizzle? It might be too spicy for you because she does not like spicy. I personally think it's better for like a sandwich or a taco. I like pepper. It's not spicy. No? But I mean, in my opinion, I'm just not a big fan of blackened fish. Like really? in general. I never order at restaurants or never ever have it. I'm just not a big fan. I just like my fish other ways. But I mean, fresh like this is really good. No complaints. It's just, again, not my my favorite. Like, I wouldn't jump to this to, to eat mahi. I'd right. rather have, like, fish tacos, you know? Right, but I think, it's, but as far as the blackened cooked and the recipe for, bla as far as blackened goes, mm. I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. Like, if that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Super yummy. Healthy recipe. Yes. I did my exercise yesterday. I'm gonna do it again today. Hope you guys are doing it too. Come along on this journey with me, please. <laughs> and, you know, the only thing a little heavy on this was that butter for cooking and dipping and all that stuff. and. Uh, so you know, that's about 700 calories or so, but you know a lot of it gets burned up and split between us and everything yeah. else. So it's, it's really not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Bringing you more epic content real soon. And until next time, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on catching. catching.